So let's get into sus chords, cadential six fours a little bit, and we're gonna kill two birds with one stone as far as those two concepts, and then we'll get into like jazz voicings and uh, inversions after that. So we're gonna rewind back to the pickup measure of our arrangement for a second to do some of this stuff. In the very beginning of the song, our melody goes A, B flat, C, D. And the chord underneath that is the five chord of, of the key we're playing, it's the F. Before ultimately resolving uh, back to the one. So what we have with this melody and this chord is this, this tension, the third of the chord clashing with the B flat that's in the melody. Um, that flat nine has a little bit of dissonance to it that I want to get rid of. So what I'm going to do to do that is create a sus chord on the left hand. And so instead of playing F, F A C, I want to play F sus, F B flat C. So now, the sus and the melody are one and the same. They're both B flats, they're octaves of one another now, instead of that flat nine, all right? I can still go to the F chord right after that, and then eventually, and then eventually the one chord after that, all right? So we're gonna change that F to an F7. So that's right on the downbeat. And on the fourth beat, we're gonna go to the five chord that we had originally. And then, boom, back to one. So just took like a quick note on cadential six fours, like this sus chord to the five, or this F sus to F back to B flat, it's technically not like a legitimate cadential six four. It has a lot of the same qualities and characteristics of a cadential six four, where you have the one over the five, the one chord over the, the root of the fifth, to the fifth, back to the one, right? So we're calling it a cadential 6-4. It's technically not, but it functions as such because of all the overlap that F sus has with B flat. So just know that. We're kind of playing a little loose with the terms a little bit. But having said that, let's get into some slash chords and inversions. So there we have the use of a sus chord to better reflect the melody and to also create a tension release sort of resolution. What are some other chords we might have been able to use to help make that B flat less dissonant with our harmony? We can look at the primary chords we're dealing with, E flat, F, and B flat, and see that, I don't know, in the E flat chord, that has a B flat in it, right? It's the fifth of the chord. And if I precede the F with that, I have this really cool, like we've talked about over and over again, clockwise movement around the map. We get four, five, one. We could have very easily gone from F to E flat, the four chord, over to F, and then back to B flat. We could have just gone four, five, one, right? The use of the sus chord works for the, for the reason that the B flat's in the melody. Therefore, so does the use of E flat. So does the use of, of the four chord. So if I want to throw in that four chord right there, let me do that. So now we have E flat, F, B flat, right? But now that we've done this E flat chord, for the sake of meshing better with the melody, we really don't need the sus chord at the beginning anymore. It would actually kind of, I don't know, it doesn't sound weird, but it's not necessary anymore. So you can keep it there if you want. I'm gonna get rid of it. Because like I said, arranging your harmony is completely up to you. How you wanna do it is up to you. Just consider the melody as much as you can. And these rules and guidelines are completely flexible, all right? So just go with your instincts or what your ear or what you want or what the purpose of your arrangement is or what mood you're trying to set. So keep the sus chord if you want. I'm getting rid of it, all right? So now we have F, B flat, F, B flat. Typical primary chord sequence as an introduction into the song. Just one, four, five, one, all right? So now that we have this new like harmonization of the pickup measure, this new interpretation of what's going on, Let's take it one step further and see if we can do anything to the bass to make it a bit more fluid or melodic or have it jive more with what's going on in the melody 
or give it more stepwise movement as opposed to just you know the step step in the fourth which is good those are the intervals we want when we're looking at the baseline right steps and fourths or steps and fifths we've talked about that over and over again but if we make the e flats an inversion or a slash chord and we do the same thing to the f we can kind of melodically in the bass move to our b flat we can do this g a b flat if i go with a first inversion e flat chord and a first inversion f chord i've got this really cool movement now in the bass that also parallels the melody so this is what we're going to do to be able to do that just like we've done before if i said first inversion i want the third as the bass we go with the triangle slide that in there so now it's e flat over g right i love the use of slash chords i think they're a really cool way of reharmonizing what you're doing and it's a subtle change we talked about subtleties and details it's this one little subtle thing that you can do that completely reshapes the harmony even though you're not really doing anything harmonically right you're not changing the notes you're just putting them somewhere else it's a really cool effect that will go a long way and there's lots of popular examples of slash chords. So now with our slash chords in, in effect, or our inversions, however you want to call them, uh, it's going to sound like this. So now to add some color or extra tones or richness to the harmony, you turn the jazz voicing button on and mapping tonal harmony will consider the chord scale that the chord we have in there is born from. So some of the extension tones that you're going to hear mapping tonal harmony lean on are going to be like add nines and dominant sevens and major sevens. For example, with the E flat chord, there's the there's the nine in there. There's the F present. With the F seven, it went for the dominant seven and added the E flat. And on the B flat chord, the A shows up to give us B flat major seven. That's going to give us this new arrangement. So there's our new and improved introduction with our, our jazz chords and our, and our slash chords and all the stuff we talked about. Really cool sounding, right? So with our next video, what we're going to do is a little bonus video, a technique we didn't really mention before called line cliches. So definitely come on back and check that out because that's going to be really awesome. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've been learning from anything that we've been teaching you, uh, please like and subscribe. You don't have to, but it really helps us keep creating the content. That helps us spread the word of this musical gospel that we're trying to get across to the, uh, to the masses, all right? So, like I said, if it's been instructional at all and you want to help us keep producing the content, just click like or subscribe, and that would be really helpful. Also, check out all the other stuff we have on, like, Polytonus and Tessitura. We have tons of videos that help educate people on music, theory, concepts, and execution. Thanks for watching.